What is up, my people? Welcome to Fellowship Bible Church's Sermon Spotlight, where we are coming at you each and every week with a fresh service to debrief an effort to send biblical truth. And what better way to do that than the power of conversation? My name is Mark Francis, and I am in the center host seat today. And to my right, your left, watching at home, the lovely Miss Alicia Battaglia. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Good. So I just want to jump right in and okay. say... Thank you to the army of people who came together to make Kids Week BBS happen last week. Kids Week was was amazing. It was fantastic. It was special. It was memorable. It was so much fun. Um, And just a few little highlights. The kids learned about how great our God is, that he's omniscient, he's omnipotent, he's omnipresent. Mm -hmm. These are elementary kids just soaking this up and 16 kids profess their faith in Christ. There were many others yeah, who just like, yeah. yeah, this is the Jesus I believe in. They, they already had faith. Their faith was strengthened. Um, and shout out to the media team who helped mm. us get things yeah. uh, virtual. And so for those of you who weren't able to attend, you can go online and catch a whole lot of it. It's it's up on the website. So it is Check all there. it out. The Just mission. FBCVA.life slash Kids Week, and you'll be able to find the clicks and get there. Yes. Yep. The missions um, segments are probably one of my favorite parts about the whole week. So uh, if you can only pick and choose, definitely watch those mission videos. They are so fun. Really, really well done. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's videos of kids. Yes. Yeah. That were partnered th- with their parents or were partnered with their whole families around the world. So we had some from the kids Africa were captivated. And Thailand and Chicago and, you know, it's and, and the kids India. who shared on the videos did such a great they job. They did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, was it was fantastic. Really, yeah. really, really good. Well, thanks to you, Alicia, and your team. And there's a whole slew and army of volunteers, but a lot of the planning that went into so leading up to that week, I think paid off. There's a yeah, lot of great was, success yeah. of just having kids of all ages from ages 5K to fifth grade and over almost 200 kids each and every day were yeah, there. Right. And it almost was, 100 volunteers that were serving and And actually there's probably so, even more volunteers than that because people jumped in uh, along the way. Um, but it, it's just really neat to see God's faithfulness on display. Yeah. And I love that. <laughs> and almost so and over eighteen hundred dollars was raised oh, that they yes. that the kids brought some of their money mm-hmm. and the reborn were church able to go to Chicago to help yes. families in need in Chicago. Yeah. So that's great. And we also have with us Mark Carey. We've barely heard from you so far, but hello. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> well, first of all, I want to apologize for anybody who's got emails for me uh, uh, recently. Uh, the strange emails that went out to. Everybody and their brother. Yeah. That's the time of that is so weird. It was an email, you know, one of those hack things that said, you know, this is Mark Carey, whatever, please send me money or whatever it was. <laughs> yeah. I thought, you know, the time yeah. of that is amazing coming after Romans 12 and love without hypocrisy. <laughs> yeah. So we got all these guilty FBCers out there. Said, oh, geez, well, maybe this was a, a ploy, you know, contribute to the needs of the saints. And now here's Carey asking contribute for money. To the need of the pastor. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so anyway, I, probably most of you think, oh, this is crazy. And they you, you deleted it. But a number did. I, I got, I've gotten calls from around the United States because oh wow. the email went yeah. through my whole Everybody. personal. And oh, it was like, this wow. didn't sound like you, Mark, but I thought I'd better check. And it was, and it really yeah. came from your email account, too. That's the scary thing is that I, I think it came somehow there was a hack. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it says, yeah, yeah. your email. But anyway, hopefully it's straightened mm. out and you've taken care of it. Well, not yet, but. I'm working on it. Yeah. Hey. I mean, this stuff is insidious. It's it's crazy what 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 can happen because every piece of information from my emails. Oof. So, I mean, personal oh, data, it's, 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 it's all, it's there. Anything I've sent, uh, you know, over the last year or two. Wow. Or, or that's in a saved email. Yeah. Right. Personal data yeah. or uh, documents or anything like that. Time to lock it, it down. Is Ooh. accessible. That's yeah. Wow. Scary stuff. Yep. Mm. Mm. Be on the alert. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> So maybe you will have an opportunity to contribute to the needs of the saints when, when I uh, when everything is depleted from my account. By the way, just an FYI, uh, we in the past have f- we have frozen our credit accounts. Hmm. Uh, it's just a safety thing that mm-hmm. my wife and I have done. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's not a bad idea to consider doing that. Mm-hmm. And anybody anyway, it's a hassle because if you're trying to apply for something or whatever, you got to unfreeze it so you can. 
they can access your oh, right. uh, uh, credit rating. Right. Good. But um, uh, take those steps. I think safety first. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's somewhere in Hezekiah twenty one three. Of I course. Think. Check it out. Yeah. <laughs> Look that one up. Yeah. Anyway. Tips, tips you never thought you would hear on Sermon Spotlight. <laughs> that's right. There you oh go. my goodness. Fraud and security. Uh, yeah. There hints, you go. Hence, how to love when you want to fight. That's it. All right. So Alicia, take <laughs> it away. How do you live in a hostile world? What yes. you know? What path are we on? Grid. <laughs> and uh, yeah, give us your your first takeaway. Yeah. Alicia, and we'll so get to, to Mark Romans and twelve. The title of of the sermon this week was how to love when you want to fight and. Wow, how applicable is applicable is that today? Um, it's easy for us to love the lovely, the people we already love, the people we like, the people we want to be like. It's easy to love those people, but how do we love the unlovable? And um, one question, Pastor Mark, that you asked or uh, somehow implied was, how well do we know our God? And that um, hmm. that point, that question made me think about um, something that I read in this book. It's called Gentle and Lowly, The Heart of Christ for Sinners and Suffers. It's by Dane Ortland. So far, it's an outstanding book. And um, he has a quote by Martin Lloyd-Jones that says, there's only one way to know that we are sinners, and that is to have some dim, glimmering conception of God. And which made me think about your statement in the sermon. But then he also goes on to say, in the biblical gospel, we are not given a thing, we are given a person. And uh, I just think that there's um, that's foundational because our relationship with Jesus is directly related to how we love others. And this sermon right here is, well, actually, the, the past sermon starting in 12 verse 9, let love be genuine. We've been learning about that. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, it goes back to that old saying that, you know, what a man thinketh about God is the most important thing about him. So we can't run anything through of life. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we can't understand it properly without running it through the grid of who God is. And so if we live in a hostile world, which we do, and we're going to continue to live mm -hmm. and see more and more hostility, um, uh, if we're not anchored to the, the character of God, who he is, his love for me, his sovereignty, all these, these truths about God, we will be inclined to take matters into our own hands. And when we do, that opens the door. There will, mm -hmm. it always will be a fleshly res response. And so, and, and we'll just muck up the thing. Because if we respond in kind, if we, not kindly, but if we respond in kind, if they're evil towards us and we respond with vindictive, revengeful mm -hmm. uh, response, it, it, it never goes well. It just yeah. never goes well. And... Um, uh, so that I think but the apostle Paul and God via the apostle Paul is trying to spare us a lot of heartache and a lot mm -hmm. of headache at the same time. Uh, yeah, they can take your homes. We went to the Hebrews 10 34 passage. Um, the, the, uh, the, the godless world, and we can see this in the early church. They can wreck all sorts of havoc. They threw Christians into the lion's den. I mean, the, in the, the Colosseum, I mm -hmm. mean, they, Horrible, horrible things um, have 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 been done uh, against those who have named the name of Christ, um, and you know, again, where is God in this? And and He is walking with us. And if it's if our whole hope and uh, focus is this life, uh, then we're of all men most to be pitied in the sense that if this is our only hope. It's not, and we have to keep looking for that better city. You know the right. the, the Hebrews eleven and and, and Hebrews twelve uh, type of concept. So, um, yeah, it's a great passage of scripture, but it's it doesn't it's not going to mean anything if we're not growing in the grace and knowledge mm -hmm. of the Lord. But it's like you said. I mean, our knee jerk reaction is to give like for like, or kind for kind, or eye for an eye, tooth for tooth. That's our that's our we natural fight back. bent. We want to mm -hmm. fight back. And so, if we have the proper understanding of who God is and trust that, okay, vengeance is mine, declares the Lord. You know, it's not not for me to yeah. do that. I need to sit back. And the key passage for me was just be at peace with all men. Yeah. 
and, and that call. If, that's at all, a, if at all possible. If it, yeah, exactly. But just to have that mentality, be like, okay, walking by the Spirit, proper understanding of God, to then not have that knee-jerk, fleshly reaction to fight back. Right. And that's the challenge. <laughs> and I think where the question mark, and I brought this up a little bit in my sermon, but where the question mark comes in people's minds, understandably, uh, we do live in a country, and it's, you know, praise the Lord, that we ca- we do have legal recourse yeah. mm-hmm. on certain things. Right. And so there are Christians who would say, well, maybe I shouldn't even take the legal recourse. Um, you know, if I'm a, a spouse and I'm being abused by my uh, spouse, you know, do I just sit and take it? Uh, you know, is that the godly thing to do or, you know, and so there's all these questions. And of course, the answer to that is no, if you're physically abused right. as a spouse, mm-hmm. you yep. call the, call the authorities right. for Pete's you, sake yeah. Yeah. And, and put yourself into a place of safety. <laughs> there's allowance for help. That's right. And it's good to get yeah. wise counsel too. Don't just think mm-hmm. about this on your own, but to, to seek out wise, spiritually mature people in your lives that can say, Hey, how should I really handle this? Yeah. You know, what, are, what are the options? Yeah. I mean, here's one for you. Because it happened to our uh, one little grandchild, uh, grandson, um, being picked on at school. Mm-hmm. And and it happened to be a girl. Oh. And she was just downright mean. Mm-hmm. And she would shove him and do things. And I think it was her way of showing affection. Mm-hmm. The mm-hmm. story is that she this was happening at her home. So mm-hmm. you, you, yep. you get the yep. backstory on right. this thing. Right. And... Uh, but he didn't even want to go to recess. Mm-hmm. He didn't, he didn't. Mm-hmm. And and you, well, you never hit a girl. Mm-hmm. You never, you know, you know, you gotta, you don't retaliate because mm-hmm. that's what the Bible says. Yeah. And uh, so what do you do in that situation? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, of course, grandpa said, you know, <clears throat> pop her one, I'll bet she'll be the last time she'll ever hit you back. <laughs> so, I mean, there, but there's a place for that, quite frankly. And then what did her parents say? <laughs> yeah, well... But I love how you deal with that later. Yes, I love how in the sermon you did get very personal with some different stories, you know. And so I've got to dive into those stories a little bit more. You, you know, when you were a kid growing up, you had, you liked to talk, and you got put out there to give those zingers to people. Mm-hmm. And you know, how did that fit in line with what God would call us to do? But then you also had a positive story of the neighbor and mm-hmm. the dog, and mm-hmm. and being able to respond in love to those people. So I love the personal touches, yeah. which know? I think, I, and I want I, that book by the way. Give it, you know, the thousand the, zingers, oh, the thousand the, insults. The insults. Yeah. yeah, I wonder if it's yeah. even in print. I mean, that was, it was. I got it, you know, just before the Earth's crust hardened. But, uh, <laughs> but somebody had but it had to write it back then. Yeah, and, and and that was one thing that I was convicted of through throughout the whole sermon was, you know, it's uh, my response and not returning that hostility, but over to coming evil with good. But there was conviction in my heart about how, how have there been times when I have been the one who's been host- hostile? How have I contributed to someone's hurt? How have I cons- contributed to s- demeaning somebody um, just with the pride in my own heart? And so I think that that is um, something that is important for us is for us, one, to check our heart, but um, but then there's situations like there, we had somebody write in about how to handle a cer- certain situation where maybe someone belittles you or cuts you down, um, or another situation about if somebody's gossiping about you. Um, or this is prevalent in the church, you know, believer against believer kind making, of crime, right? Yeah, and, and making so- false accusations, whatever. Number one, are you... Are you, how are you contributing to that? Um, but secondly, um, you know, if if it is truly against you, uh, Philippians 4, 4 through 7 is a great encouragement for us to pray and to make those requests known to God. Um, uh, Matthew 18 is really helpful uh, by just instructing us to go talk to that person. If it's a brother or sister in Christ, we can go and uh, just humbly, with love, express, "Hey, this is this is how this is affecting me. Um, can, can you give me some input into maybe why you're saying that, um, and being teachable and in that confrontation as well?" Uh, but one thing that really stands out to me, and I just think every time it gets me in trouble, is my tongue. Um, and and James three, taming the tongue, because our tongues can be like fire, and they're harder to tame than a wild beast, and they're full of deadly poison. And uh, 
chapter James chapter 3, starting in verse 9, says, speaking of our tongue, with it we bless our Lord and Father, and with it we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come, ble- come blessing and cursing. My brothers, these things ought not be so. Does a spring pour forth the same opening, both fresh and salt water? Can a fig tree, my brother, bear olives or grapevine produce figs? Neither can a salt pond yield fresh water. So they're not, they don't go hand in hand. We, we're, we're not to bless and curse at the same time. No, it doesn't happen. But moving, moving on in verse 13, um, so who is wise and understanding among you? Among you? By his good con- conduct, let him show his works in the meekness and wisdom. But the verse 17, but the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere, and, and sincere, and a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. So there uh, I think that it's if we can sit in some of these passages um, and get to know what God's heart is for us and grasp onto his heart to be able to share that with others Mm -hmm. that helps us work through conflict. Yeah. And and it's, I think it's passages like that that help us understand his heart and what he expects of us. And we have to then also be fully aware of our heart. Mm -hmm. David said, you know, search me, try me, see if there's Mm -hmm. any wicked way in me. And if I'm bothered by comments that people make to me, why am I bothered by that? Mm-hmm. I, now all of a sudden I can bo- mm. fall into a self-protective mode, and now it's all about me again. Mm. Right. So I, I get upset when people say those things because I'm really just selfish. Mm. I'm really, uh, you it's know, offending mm. my pride. Yeah, right. And it's, <laughs> you know, you know, hey, they said this to me. You know, it's like it's like we had all our little grandkids with us this weekend, and you know, the the, the six, five, six, seven, and eight year olds, you know, and. And the, all of a sudden, well, he said this to me. <laughs> it's like, okay, so, you know, wh- is that true? Well, then don't worry about it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, to, but mm-hmm. even in that little, as a child, it, mm-hmm. we want our own, we want our self protected. Mm-hmm. We don't want people to say things that aren't true. That's, it's hard. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. so hard mm-hmm. when, when you hear that people think certain things or say certain things. Uh, about you that you know aren't true, and they're being. Um, Our first in- instinct is to defend ourselves. To defend ourselves. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I'm not saying there's no place for that. Sure, there. You know, truth needs to come out and be born. But you know, at some point, yeah, you know, like Jesus and with the, the Peter passage, mm-hmm. while being reviled, he did not revile in turn, but mm-hmm. kept in trust Trusting himself. Him. And mm-hmm. it, it, it it takes that wisdom from James though mm-hmm. to really think this through. And all right, Lord. I, I want I don't want to do anything that is out of social mo- uh, selfish motives and personal protection. I, I you're my advocate. Vengeance mm-hmm. is yours. Mm-hmm. You'll you'll repay, but I what is best for this person in that situation, and certainly calling people uh, to account yeah. is proper. And that's why Matthew 18 you go to the church. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But later in Matthew 18, it's Peter said, "How many times do we forgive? Seven times." Oh, 70 yeah, times seven. 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 And right. log in your own eye. Right. Yeah, well. the, the whole peacemaker thing. But I love, I love your responses because that question that somebody posed to us is, that you can apply that anywhere. You know, how, how do I handle somebody who is just belittling me or tearing me down or picking at me? And, and literally, Isha, what I heard from you is, you know, approach that person in love and have a conversation. Mark, what I hear from you is- Buy a book of a thousand and one insults. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, right. no. Yeah, but, but <laughs> right. to look at our own heart and, and right. how we're responding to those people. And so there's all kinds one of different way to, ways to look at God's perspective. One yeah. way to live peaceably among men is- not to try to avoid those people because that's another natural tendency. It's like, oh, this is an uncomfortable situation. I'm going to walk down the other hall so I don't have to (laughs) confront this person or whatever. But um, in some situations, like what we talked about earlier, if there is an area of hostility that you really need to get help and protection, if there's danger, then you need to avoid that at all costs. But we're talking about just a our general rub and offenses here. Um, but instead of avoiding them, overcoming evil with good is being proactive to feed them if they're hungry, right. give them a drink if they're thirsty, 
saying words of kindness, looking for ways to encourage them. Like instead of looking at their negative, honing in on that, which is so easy to do, maybe find areas of strength that we could say, you you know what, you're really gifted in this and encourage them in that. And um, so just taking our tongue, which is what gets me in trouble so often, but using our tongue to build up and encourage the yeah. other person. I think if, again, it's a prayerful response that says, mm-hmm. Lord, if we could look at people who are hurting us and say, what is going on behind the scenes? Mm-hmm. I can remember yep. when my boys were yep. little in, in elementary school, and there was one particular kid who was a bully. And he was not just to my boys, but to others. And they would, yeah, they would grouse about it every time for after school. Oh, so and so, he ah, he's so mean, and he blah blah blah. So I challenged them one time to say, "Why don't you?" There's a reason why, you know, whatever his name was, you know, Bubba is acting that way <laughs> at school. Uh, maybe listen. Maybe find. There's got to be something going on. Maybe in his home. There's something he is that he's troubled about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, within that week, the boys came back from school and they had found out that the guy's dad had walked out on his family mm-hmm. and it disappeared. Mm-hmm. He and was that, without his dad. Yeah, and that that can help help give empathy in, yeah, in that sense. Yeah, in perspective. Yeah, and, and then also to extend forgiveness. That's because right. If we're harboring unforgiveness in our heart, it makes it really hard to yep. Yep. <laughs> show that and extend that kindness. Um, so when we realize that there most likely is yep. something yep. more going on. Um, and I'll brag on my wife a little bit too, similar story where she had a coworker that she was just having difficult conversations with and it was just t- challenging to even do any kind of work with her. It was like, what is going on? And as she approached in love to find out what was going on behind the scenes, health concerns, Mm -hmm. divorce, family issues. And then she ended up bringing her dinners and doing other things, going above and beyond over the top to where it broke down barriers and it made the the relationship in the workplace at least, you know, tolerable. Yeah, Abraham I mean, Lincoln, yeah. the best way to handle your enemy is to make him your friend Yeah, mm-hmm. and doing those acts of kindness. And mm-hmm. that's exactly, if mm-hmm. they're hungry, feed them. Mm-hmm. So you, you find out, are they hungry? Are they naked? Well, how can I feed them? How can I clothe mm-hmm. them? How mm-hmm. can I be an encouragement? And, you know, we, we it's, it's the old uh, water off a duck's back. Okay, they're saying things. Just let it, just let it go. Yeah. And if it's serious, look, vengeance is mine, mm-hmm. I'll repay. Mm-hmm. Now, again, we have to be careful because, mm-hmm. you know, there are people who, again, you could take the bully thing or whatever, but they don't, they, they take it in and it's harming their own psyche. Mm-hmm. And how many kids mm-hmm. have been bullied and end up committing suicide? Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there is a place, you're going to have to release it. You got to talk right. with someone, get a prayer partner. Right. And and say and you don't have to share names or anything like that, but you 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 can't bear that burden alone sometimes. Mm-hmm. And people, we, that's the body of Christ that help us point each other to and our God. Having that objective opinion can be really helpful because in the midst yeah. of it, especially if we're the ones being injured, we we f- are feeling all the emotion and all our thoughts are very subjective to the situation. And so for someone who's coming from the outside, who maybe can have a clearer picture and help us navigate those waters right. can be really helpful. And that's where the church comes in. And at right. some point, mm-hmm. you know, the, maybe the, the, the elders of the church have to step in mm-hmm. and help mediate some things. And, and we've done that numerous times here at Fellowship Bible Church uh, or, or, or taken it to the level of, of, of church discipline. Hmm. Um, Again, again, there's no kind of monolithic approach to this type of thing. There are these general principles: never repay back evil, you know, or never pay back evil with evil to anyone. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't retaliate. Don't be re- in revengeful. Uh, be peaceable with everyone. Um, you know, don't retaliate. And then in verse 17, you you point you really brought this out, but give thought to repay no yeah. one for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. And I think that that is. Uh, such excellent <laughs> advice from Paul here for us to be ha- to have that forethought of okay, be thinking ahead. What can I be doing uh, to bless this person? What can I do to show good to that yeah. person for that person's good, even if it's at my expense? Yeah. And be thinking ahead about that. Um, but then there is um, 
we we still need to be mindful that we have to walk in the spirit that in order for us to do these things that's it has right. to be spirit enabled in order for us to have genuine love that's right because it yeah it's it's our flesh is going to get in there at some point yep. and it's going to show mm-hmm. and now <laughs> like that other story i told about of the of, of my friend who it it, it it eventually became retaliatory words back and forth with a cantankerous person he was dealing with. And it, it just eventually, hmm. so you can bite your tongue, you can say, okay, I'm going to do this or whatever. But at some point, if it's not spirit controlled yeah. and truly spirit directed, hmm. it I will I will mess it up every time. Yeah. And that's, that's a concern. I do think, and it's, you know, these are, these are good, all good, um, discussions and at levels that most people face, it's 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 where it gets difficult. And when we get into Romans thirteen about being subject to the government, all those types of things, uh, we're going to play a video clip uh, in August of uh, of Simon mm-hmm. uh, Yako and the mm-hmm. the persecution that's going on in the Nigerian church, yeah. and um, th- those are. Those are life and death situations. Mm-hmm. Those are yeah. serious. Those are early, those are New Testament churchish mm-hmm. type things mm-hmm. where they are seizing the property mm-hmm. and they are. And, and now how do that you gets respond? Serious, how, how do you respond? Yeah. And I think these passages are just as applicable because those are the people Paul was writing to mm-hmm. in the early yeah. church. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's okay to talk about a kid in school who's getting bullied, uh, but Paul didn't necessarily have that in mind. Um, we're talking about people living in Rome under Nero as the emperor, yeah. under an evil regime who was sticking Christians on a stake, or, or putting them in oil, sticking them on a stake and burning them alive yeah. to light mm-hmm. up Rome. Yeah. What do you do? Yeah. And uh, Christians all over the world have to are addressing this issue. And and quite frankly, some are taking up arms mm-hmm. and and to protect their mm-hmm. churches and their families. And others are are dying and mm-hmm. you know again spirit directed spirit controlled mm-hmm. and um so do you find this to be a difficult passage i mean i know oh. we've said over the last several months there are certain ones that are really tough i mean are, are there things that we haven't asked this question yet but are on the cutting room floor that you didn't really get to i mean because it is making statements you know never take your own revenge be at peace with all yeah. men and yet you gave you have some caveats to that yeah. is that you can't and but the problem is you can't give them all of them yeah because everybody listening to a sermon like that or reading a passage of scripture is going to come up with a yeah but mm. mm. and either in their own life experience or a friend of theirs mm. and and it, it, so these are general principles, and it's a grid that we need to live by. And then as the Holy Spirit directs us from the truth of God's word to apply it in this type of a situation, it starts with knowing the word mm. and then being open. Okay, now, Lord, that's the forethought it, it, as situations come up. Um, but th- there are the the, the uh, opportunities to be, um, to be shown evil mm. are... Are you well, know, and they're endless. Limitless. They're limitless, yes. and so yes. how you you can't just there's kind of again one size doesn't fit all. It's a hard attitude, and and there's a t- again there's a time to go to the legal route. There's a time right. to go to you don't want to enable someone's sinfulness. So at some point, you say, "Do not do that again." Right. I can remember a, a friend of mine. He was in. Um, uh, he will remain nameless, but he was uh, with his child at a uh, at a uh, amusement park, and there was a father who was clearly being abusive to his child. I mean, he was just he was mean, abusive, and finally, my friend had all he could do, and he asked him. He said, "By the way, can I have your name and uh, address?" The guy said, "What? What do you want that for?" Because I need something. Because when I call the police on the way you're abusing your child, I have to have a name and an address. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you know, it was. Yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, it was it was yeah. a needful so, correction. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, yeah. we don't want to be enablers of sinful mm-hmm. uh, activities, mm-hmm. but again, sure. it's one thing when you see it being done towards others, but it, don't you retaliate against evil against you? Yeah. It just takes the wisdom of but God. Christ mm-hmm. is our example. That's and right. you alluded to First Peter two. Let me just read this. First Peter two twenty one is kind of a a summary and wrap up to all of this. For you have been called for this purpose, since Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example for you to follow in his steps, 
who committed no sin, nor was any deceit found in his mouth, and while being reviled, he did not revile in return. While suffering, he uttered no threats, but kept entrusting himself to him who judges righteously. And he bore, and he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that we might die to sin and live to righteousness, for by his wounds you were healed. For you were continually straying like sheep, but now you return to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. I mean, that, that summarizes a lot. And isn't it interesting that on the heels of that, because there's no chapter and verses in the original text, mm. right on the heels, he says, in the same way, you wives be subject to your hus mm. husbands, mm. that you can win them without a word by mm -hmm. your reverent, you know, mm -hmm. chaste behavior. And you husbands, live with your wife in an understanding way, mm -hmm. so your prayers aren't. Right. So he goes right into the marriage relationship, mm. which makes me think too, that Peter had some specific things in mind in terms of the home life. Mm. Um, this is very difficult to put into practice, um, and um, you know it, it. It causes all sorts of uh, concerns and questions. You mean to tell me I can't mm, fill in the blank? And just again, that bickering or the the little insults and the little you know, all those things that go on. I mean, it happens in my house <laughs> behind yeah. the scenes that sure. are just that is sin cropping its ugly head. Yeah. And, and how do you deal with that? Yeah, yeah. I no, just but, think about <laughs> Jesus, how he. Um, in his suffering, even on the cross, and he he prayed, "Take this cup from me." He was feeling that pain, but mm -hmm. he responded to his pain. Yet not my will, but yours be done. Father, please forgive them. Yeah. And wow, what a heart! And that's yeah. where I try to end in the sermon. That we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize, right. but was yeah. kept in all respects. He was. He knows our pain. He has suffered unjustly. Um, and, and he's so not we can left go to that us, throne of grace. He's not left us alone. No. Like he, the Holy Spirit lives in us. And that just thinking about that always blows my mind to think God himself indwells in me. So there's not a, ever, ever going to be a situation that he's not going to be with me through and he's not going to help me through, that he's not going to lead me through. And his word is... My instruction that gives, instructs my heart and my mind and his Holy Spirit is what enables me, empowers me to be like him, That's to right. respond like him. It's the, the bottom line is, I guess we're coming full circle here, but the bottom line is to the degree we know our God and we trust him, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we'll be able to live this out. If we don't, if we're not growing in the grace and knowledge of the Lord, what happens so often is either we jettison these things and we continue to live our own way, or we legalistically try to apply this, mm. either way, we come away sad and mm -hmm. depressed. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, but out of the joy of the Lord, if we can fulfill these things and honor God and please Him, that's the bottom line. Yeah. That's yep. the bottom line. Good stuff, guys. Yep. yep. That's full circle. Come back to the knowledge of God. Yep. I love yep. it. And there is always things to be pointing you guys to as you watch and listen. I'm just going to highlight just a couple of quick things. Um, if you're listening to this and it's the final week of June, um, we have the one-time church service on Saturday night, July 3rd. That's a seven o'clock service. Come early. Is the weather uh, looking good for that? The weather is looking a little suspect. So yeah. be on your watch, be on alert for all the communication threads that will go out. By Friday, we'll be making the decision if we'll be indoors for two services oh, on okay. Saturday. <laughs> so there still will not be services on Sunday, okay? no matter what. And we will go indoors on Saturday and then have a movie indoors if that's the case. So okay. be on the lookout for that thread, emails, notifications. Just, so just a reminder, subscribe to all of the notifications so you can see what's happening. It'll be at our website, fbcva.life also. And let me just give another quick plug because in the fall, the Family Life Ministry and the church are going to be pushing another big focus. And we haven't done one in a couple of years, but I only say this because it's relevant to what we're talking about right now. It's going to be called Overflow. And the theme of it is going to be looking at all the different passages that are one another focused, hmm. love one another, serve one another. And what we're talking about right here, remember these conversations because mm -hmm. in the fall, we'll be hitting them more of how can we live our lives around others as God has shown us. So overflow, be on the lookout for that. And that'll be in the fall. So guys, thanks so much for watching and listening again, where all your, your subscriptions are to podcasts, find us, let us know what you want to talk about, what questions you might have. We'd love to hit that and uh, respond to you guys out there. So the fact of the matter, guys, is that sermons are not meant to take an hour, but rather transform a lifetime. Until next week, much love and God bless. <laughs>